If you remember way back when, when we did Super Mario Galaxy, we faced a boss called Top Maniac. He was the leader of the Topman tribe. In Super Mario Galaxy, he was about as weak a boss as you could possibly find. He had very little chances of actually hitting you with his attacks, his minions were pathetic, and you could beat him inside of around 50 seconds because you all you had to do was jump on him three times. Now that we got a boss in Wario Blast called Top Man, it's uh, nice to see that they aren't like each other at all. Top Man is sort of like Cup King. He's just another, you know, small head thing in a big boat cup doodad, and he just flies around the map and tries to attack you. Thankfully, the attack that he goes with isn't a three-way projectile, and instead is just a single projectile that he fires that has a very short range. He's actually quite an easier boss than the Cup King, and he's easier to defeat, mostly because he actually follows the pathways that are set out on the map rather than just flying over everything, which means he has a better hitbox than other bosses in this game. You can actually plan around where he's going and put bombs there to that effect and like all the bosses in Wario Blast you immediately get max stats for your bombs so it's more of a simple way of going forward to actually kill Top Man. Not quite as challenging but since it's not bullshit difficulty it's more of a satisfying challenge and ultimately just gives us the most satisfaction because his power up is way more useful than Cup King's. He gives Bomberman or Wario whoever you're playing as the dash move which lets you move at twice the speed of any other enemy in the game. This is going to be vital doing any sort of challenges from here on out because it gives you such a huge advantage over every other enemy that you find. Other than bosses, obviously. So, I can definitely say that Hudson Soft, the actual developer behind this game, not Konami, did very well with this game. I definitely appreciate the slowing of challenge, you know, making the boss have to deal with the same mechanics that you do, because other bosses in this game are not going to follow that standard, and it just makes things kind of fiddly. It doesn't ultimately ruin any boss fights by itself, but being able to have the boss follow the same tracks that you do just makes them an easier target and you can kind of plan it out better. If the bosses are going to start breaking the rules, then it's just kind of a dicky thing to try and beat them because, like you said, if they can phase through walls, there's not much you can do to counter that.